Oh my goodness, what a monster. There are very few weapons in the entire game that I covet as highly as the Ground Pounder. And I know, I know, I've shown this chart before, so we'll make it quick. But there are fewer, better examples of what an unnecessary damage buff this update was for some weapons, as the Ground Pounder was already very strong. And as you can see, they basically doubled the amount of damage. I know, technically it's a 93% damage bonus, but that is huge. This weapon is tied actually among the strongest shotguns in the game and we're going to use another page of this spreadsheet which I don't always show as often but if you basically take like the actual DPS you know the true DPS which is basically the damage per second you know you're spamming shells as you do into normal enemies this takes into the account uh, the amount of time you spend reloading now there are outliers like the room sweeper which is technically the highest DPS but good luck utilizing all of that and the helium shotgun which you know shoots a projectile so it's kind of hard to manage that and I'm actually not sure why the bear is so high here but as you can see the pop shot husk buster and stampede they're the same weapon and the ground pounder are all basically tied as the best shotguns in the game so if you guys have ever been in my streams when somebody asked me what's the best shotgun i probably gave that person four answers and that's because of this spreadsheet right here true dps and normal dps you can see they're still very similar like the ground pounder and the pop shot even without reloads they are basically the same performance otherwise obviously the husk buster and stamping are the same weapon uh these two are scavenger variants kind of things but the ground pounder is honestly in my opinion better than all of these even though technically speaking the dps is lower than all and that is just because of the fire rate and the mag size and that is a combination that none of the other weapons have. The Pop Shot has a pretty good fast reload and all that, but it also has a five round magazine. And the Husk Buster shoots kind of slow, but does so much damage with, you know, every shot that it shoots. And that is where the Ground Pounder is my favorite of all of them. It does less damage per shot than the Husk Buster, but as you have probably seen from the gameplay, it shoots insanely fast. This thing is just rattling off shots, four per second. So essentially speaking, in the world of, you know, casual shotguns, uh, the rate that you can click is is essentially as fast as it's going to shoot. Now, I'm sure plenty of you can shoot faster than four times in a second, but this this weapon will not hold back. And that is why I am remaking this video, because it did not do nearly as much damage as it does nowadays in my recent video, and nowadays there are new six perks. So before we get into all that, let's talk about this weapon in general. This weapon is, in my opinion, this is why I said it's highly coveted by me, this is, in my opinion, the perfect shotgun. I know, I know, that's some really high praise, but this is a high damage, high high fire rate, high mag size, and acceptable reload time, which won't keep you out of the fight for very long, shotgun with a really good range. That is just marking every single box that I want to check when I'm looking for a good shotgun. There are actually weapons I covered recently, like the Nightclaw and the Longarm Enforcer, which are like basically what the Ground Pounder is, but those weapons are pump action. The Ground Pounder literally does more damage per shot and shoots faster because it's a semi-auto. And I have not found a better shotgun that suits my personal personal playstyle, which is just run and gun using this weapon like it's an SMG. And that is where I am making this video because it was not well demonstrated in my old video. And nowadays I want to get a little further into it. Speaking of which, let's talk about the perks for this. Now, this shouldn't surprise anybody. Crit builds are very common for these weapons, but we're going to have a little bit more to talk about more so than usual. Now, there are new six perks, which are, well, there's basically a new six perk, I should say, which is the stunning or knocking back. And that I don't, I am honestly uncertain what 12 base damage is in all of our calculations which have been rough and unsuccessful it's not that much damage meaning your bonus damage from affliction or slow ensnared is going to do plenty and with this weapon i have more to say than most because it's a shotgun it's dealing a crap ton of damage and the affliction bonus is a lot as of recording it has been several updates since they reintroduced the supposed bug where affliction is doing more damage than it ever used to do but they've you know like i said for a few updates now i've just ignored it this time around so I'm thinking this one might stick, and I believe it should. Affliction is not broken in our current state of the game, but it is allowing to do a lot of extra damage. So in a lot of my gameplay, you'll see me turn around from enemies, and just throughout the clips, you've probably noted enemies are just dying over periods of time. I don't have to actually focus on them, and in a crowd fight where you're going to have to stop and reload at some point, it's nice to hit like 12 or so different enemies and just watch them die as I'm focusing on different targets, and that is a really, really useful thing. I have found very little value in slowed and snared for a shotgun, because you're already in the fight. I mean, you can slow them down, which can be nice, but just keep your distance. You'll you'll have plenty of it with the ground pounder, and you'll just eliminate them from range. As for the headshot eliminations, I have not found this to be useful. Headshot eliminations cause an explosion. Could be nice, like genuinely nice, to actually eliminate with a headshot and affect all the enemies around it, but 
uh, Affliction not only gives you that extra damage over time, but it also gives you that 45% bonus. Now, damage to Mist of Monsters and Bosses could be really nice. Even if you're running Affliction, you might still want that damage to Mist of Monsters and Bosses. But, uh, spoiler alert, a Smasher is still likely going to take more than four shots. Uh, you know, maybe Zappy Faces or Takers, if you hit a crit, will die in two shots, which even then, you're probably not going to need this perk in that case. For a Smasher, I think the damage to Afflicted is still going to be more damage over time, assuming you're going to take the average five to seven shots that it'll take. And no, I did not stutter there. Five to seven shots. I only have two clips of Smashers that I recorded for today's video, but I just cannot emphasize it anymore. This thing just deletes higher level enemies. I didn't get crazy lucky with my crits, but if you do roll that 38% a couple of times while you're spamming at a, at a Smasher, they will just get completely eliminated. I have pulled out the Ground Pounder specifically for mini bosses in the past. If you pop a War Cry, you're going to really, really enjoy your time with this weapon. And that's where I think these bottom two perks are basically just affliction and damage to affliction. I can't really see another way to do it. Element is actually funny because this is my fire ground pounder. I have four of them. I, you might have known from past videos, I don't have four of any weapon that is bad. So yeah, I actually only had one energy and it was snare. I specifically changed my fire one for no, re for no good reason. I just picked one of my elements. I changed it to energy just for today's gameplay because I wanted to use a, a an affliction copy. And that is where if you are in like a nature zone, then use fire. If you're in a, if you're in a water zone, use nature. And if you're in a fire zone, use water. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, I have one for every copy. That's actually what I recommend recommend doing because this weapon is worth it. I'm not even gonna lie to you right now. You can research it from the military section of the collection book. You will never get this from any llama other than military llamas. So unless you want to spend V-Bucks, you do have to research it from the collection book. But I don't think that's gonna be too big of a deal because like I said, this weapon is worth it. Although you can definitely just use energy and be fine forever. So there's also that as well. Now I actually want to get into something a little interesting to me rather than getting to the crit perks, and that's actually the reload perk. I mentioned this in my aforementioned uh, Nightclaw and Longarm Enforcer video, but I did a little bit of math to just sort of reiterate that I prefer mag size on this because the way the shotguns work, for those who don't know, is you have one number for reload time. You do not buff the amount of reload per shell, you buff how long it takes to reload all of your shots. So currently you can see that with a mag size of 7, it is going to take 2.9 seconds, which means that when you're standing there loading your weapon one shell at a time, it's going to take 0.41 seconds per shell. And I am rounding here, it's actually a lot closer than this looks, it's not even a full 0.01, it's actually less than that. But if you go to mag size, you'll see that it goes to 12 mag size and it only goes up to 5 seconds, which based on my math, which is not behaving with my screen properly, you'll see that it is only 0.42 per shell, which is basically nothing. You will never ever notice that difference, but what you will notice is 5 extra shots in the middle of the game. What I always like to say is 5 extra shots over 7 is basically just enough to eliminate whatever crowd you're shooting at most of the time. That way you'll have plenty of downtime to reload your shotgun later. Whereas if you only have the normal seven shots, uh, that might not be enough to eliminate like an encampment or something. And even though the 12 won't always be enough, it'll still allow for a lot of extra damage, especially like I said against the Smasher, where if you get unlucky with crits, it might take eight or nine shots. And that way you'll be able to eliminate it. Honestly, if it takes the full 12 shots to kill a Smasher, you might not have been aiming for the head or you might not be a high enough power level. I'm not sure what your situation would be, but 12 shots should just about do it for a Smasher. Now, 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 let's talk about the meat and potatoes, which I'm sure some of you probably already know about, but critting crit damage is the best all around, and that's because 90,000 damage per shot is what I'm doing. This is with a shotgun loadout. I'll briefly touch on it. I do have a whole video linked down below, which will get into why I use this and what your alternatives are. But this is just a really refined loadout. Shrapnel Headhunter in the lead. We have the Critical Blast and Support. I eat coconuts before most of my clips. I try to include it so you guys can see when I have that 16% uh, affected. And Locked and Reloaded is huge for shotguns because you are constantly reloading. You will be reloading in the middle of most of your fights. So why not just give yourself a 15% bonus while you're at it? And then, of course, Blast in the Pass because I'm a fanboy. Totally Rocking Out is an option, and we'll talk about that pretty much now. But while I relocate my Ground Ponder, let's get into exactly uh, what your alternative are. Fire rate and damage are really good for like SMGs and ARs. I won't recommend that for a shotgun because honestly in this case you don't want to shoot faster. Four shots per second is plenty. Double damage might be a lot more consistent than crits but what I really want to talk about is double crit damage and that is why I am a little excited to talk about this today because 
Most shotguns, I kind of just passingly note that you can do double crit damage and totally rock it out, and then sometimes I've made comments about, I don't know why you want to do that. The reason is because the ground pounder exists. If you're going to run totally rock it out, I highly recommend the ground pounder as your pick. Uh, this will just do the job. Double crit damage on this thing is insane. I have actually done the math in terms of loadouts, and if you are going to be running totally rock it out, which is the team perk that buffs your crit rating by a ton, I highly recommend uh, Buckshot in the lead. He is, generally speaking, Speaking about less than 5% better on average than Shrapnel Headhunter, and a 5% bonus is not enough for me to only buff my crits. I prefer Shrapnel in the lead to buff every shot. However, when your crit rating is as high as Totally Rockin' Out will make it, Buckshot's more like 70 to 90% better, and he is definitely the clear winner. So if you're gonna run Totally Rockin' Out, put him in the lead, you know, throw on the Totally Rockin' Out team perk, and then just whoever buffs Totally Rockin' Out, it shouldn't be too hard to build it. It'll essentially be the same components, just rearranged to factor in the new team perk. And that is where this weapon can be an insanely powerful shotgun. You will be a glass cannon, and it's still not how I personally prefer to play, but I am not gonna pretend like that is not an option. However, that is basically the last option. You can have a little bit of fun. I have done as much with like the pop shot in the past where you can do like double reload on this or even double mag size and that's legitimately fun. Like if you do double mag size on this and crit rating plus buckshot in the lead, uh, you can actually have a really good time. I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that's like technically the highest DPS, but you can see my pop shot here. This is really fun. You reload so freaking fast. It's insane. It's like multiple shells per second. It's really, really nice. And it's really really cool i know technically you're already reloading multiple times per second but it's like three or four per second it's really really fast and that's just a silly way to go uh i like to talk about the best perks damage wise and whatnot but this is just too fun not to bring up so if you're looking to have a little bit of fun try double mag size double reload do reload double mag size hell this weapon will be strong enough for it to still you know work but you can have a little bit of fun while you're at it but that just about does it for the ground pounder i am so glad to finally give this weapon a proper spot in the sun i made the original video way long ago when I was not as good at making videos and of course some changes have come around so now we have finally done the ground pounder proper if you guys want to support the channel feel free to use code message to check out it really does support me subscribe if you're new become a channel member here if you guys want to support me even further I did finally hit partner on twitch so if you guys want to hang out in my streams link down below we do have more emotes so if you guys want to subscribe it's a definitely definitely a fun time thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day <laughs> Do 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 do